Your dreams will come true if your mind isn't glued to the fact that life is so blue. Hi there, and welcome to the Sandy and Friends podcast. It's Sandy, and I'm here with Socrates Auto today. Hi, how are uh, you? Hello. Sandy, I'm so excited. You say my name perfectly. <laughs> most people struggle. Yeah, most people struggle with Socrates. They kind of say Socrates or Socrates. But you I, said it beautifully, Socrates. Thank you. I am so honored <laughs> that you just said that. Oh, my goodness. Socrates Otto. I can say it again if you'd like. <laughs> I'm, I'm so honored to be almost virtually in your beautiful living room with all this vinyl and to finally meet you. Uh, it's an honor for me. I mean, look at my backdrop. This is boring white walls, but uh, yeah, yeah. It's it's such a uh, such a pleasure to meet you, Sandy. Oh, it's so great to meet you too. And that is not a boring white wall. We also have a white wall back here. And if you'd like to, you know, bring more music into this, you're more than welcome to share your CDs. <laughs> yeah, I've got I, I've got them. I've actually got them right here. Some of them only. I mean, I I used to have about four six. 700 uh, when I was your age. <laughs> I was a big music collector, music aficionado, and I'm currently um, getting rid of them. I know that's kind of sacrilegious if you love music, but because I've been moving a lot of the time and I've got these crates of CDs, it's just taking up so much space. And of course, these days again, I kind of, I kind of can't believe I'm saying it, but everything is um, online and in the cloud, I guess. And so you can just stream music, and you, I know it's terrible. I really love holding stuff, and I've got cassettes. Do you remember ta- tape, uh, ta- uh, cassettes, tapes? Of course, absolutely. <laughs> I have a bunch. I shouldn't say, do you remember? I'm saying, are you aware of them? Because you you wouldn't have been born when they were around. But yes, you have a bunch. We can pretend. I've got them over there. I like to pretend. We can pretend. (laughs) Yeah, always, always. Um, uh, I did that for a living. But uh, (laughs) but the music, yeah, the music is uh, is something that's really special. And I I just uh, it was it was my best friend growing up. I was I had such an affinity. For music so i'm really impressed to see you decorating your living room with with your vinyl that are they your oh yes vinyl records oh yes <laughs> um most of these are actually yeah most of these are new um but uh my dad loved vinyl when he was growing up and then he saw that i was so into it so he just gave me all of his records so now they're all mine <laughs> how old you how old's your dad he's how old is he he's 56 Okay. Okay. So he's, yeah, he was just slightly older than me. Well, you know, maybe eight years older than me, but what's your, have you, who are your favorite artists? Oh my God. Oh my God. Okay. <laughs> All right. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to try to take a breath now because you just, you, I'm going to go off on a tangent if I don't. So, um, right. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. Um, I love queen. Do you like queen? Wow. Wow. <sighs> Look, I, I, not 70s queen but i did like the early 80s queen i I know i I know it's 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 not very popular to admit but but some of the 80s stuff and late 80s is when i kind of got into them so yeah yeah, Uh, queen a kind of magic bear with me uh yeah i'm I'm not very popular not not very popular to kind of say that i am I'm not a big Queen fan, but but I do I do appreciate the uh, the eighties Queen, and there is where is that song? Damn it! Oh, one one, one real damn it! Is is that a is that a no go zone on your? Uh... No, you can say anything you want. I just thought it was funny. <laughs> I'm bearing uh, uh, this. Guy. While I do this, can you tell me what um other? What's your favorite Queen record? Oh, that's so hard. Um, See? <laughs> it's just so hard. Um, okay, so for a long time, it was A Night at the Opera, but now I think it might be Queen 2. Wow. I won it all. Oh, 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 okay, okay, okay yeah, gotcha. Oh, my God, oh. Do you know it? Oh, no. Yes, of course. <laughs> oh. this is, I'm so impressed. Yeah, that's my favorite Queen song. I want it all. I could see why. Oh my god, it's so good. Um, 
I have to say my my favorite is Don't Stop Me Now. Do you know that one? Do you like that one? Yes, I think I, I do re- recall. I'll have to hear it again, but I think I'm pretty, yeah. Oh, yeah we're gonna have I, to, I'm yeah. going to have to show you a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, give you, I'll give you the when thumbs up for into, that. When did you get into Queen? Gee, uh, wow, you're interviewing me. Um, <laughs> let me think about I'm this. I'm fascinated. Um, I'm so happy that you're so fascinated. Um, <laughs> yeah. So um, it was, a, it was a couple of years ago that I started learning the guitar. I started teaching myself and I was just obsessed with Brian May's um, guitar riffs. So that started it. And then very recently um, when I found out vinyl existed and I found out about the art of making albums and all that, uh, I felt even deeper in love. <laughs> oh, that is, that's so beautiful to hear because there's a lot of people, uh, this is not to sound patronising, a lot of young people who aren't, uh, clued up on the making of a of an album back in the days and what that encompassed, and yeah. when you know buying it, you know your dad and me when we used to buy vinyl. I mean, uh, and just just the cardboard and the and the and the inner sleeve, and then putting it on the record player and the needle, and just it was so exciting. And then of course in my day, it was more cassettes and and CDs, and I would just spend days with the booklet you know, and just flicking it through and, and oh. um, you know, emulating what I could. Uh, who else? Queen? Who else? Oh, um, okay. Do you, do you like the monkeys? I love you the know? monkeys. <gasps> okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Have you seen, do you watch the monkeys TV series? Of course. As well? Of course. I of found course. them as a band yeah, first, but um, yes. I, I love yes. the show too. <laughs> yes. Oh, that's so exciting to hear! Oh my God, yeah, I never. I'm so never... you're like you're. It, it's like a '70s kind of uh, flavor for you, like, kind yeah. of '70s bands and '70s rock. What yeah, about Led I Zeppelin? Lived between six, 1968, and eh, maybe '66, and right up to '88. That's about '88. <laughs> yeah, 1988. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> 1988. Right. That's that's one of the best decades in well, best years in pop music. I'm a oh. bit of a pop uh, trivia buff. From oh, really? 1988, I say that now, 1987, 85, sorry, 1985 to about 1992 were my formidable years in pop music. I was so uh, up on everything. And so I, I kind of championed myself as being a bit of a, a pop trivia buff for those yeah. years. But it, it, what about Led Zeppelin? Look at me oh. sort of evading that topic. I just, <laughs> one second, I'll be right back. Stay here. Um, where's the record? Okay. Oh, oh my god, where did the record go? Okay, let's talk about Led Zeppelin. Okay. They're all like ah oh, yeah, beautiful. What is stunning, stunning. Robert Plant, oh my god. Like they 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 and he's still around, he's still making music on his own. Yeah. <laughs> I oh my god, but, I, um, I just... but yeah, just incredible, yeah. right? Oh how how awesome. All right, who else? <laughs> Who else? Do you like sticks? I love sticks. Well, this is, it's, you need to educate me, I'm afraid. I'm not, I'm not really familiar with sticks. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm going to send you a text. They were a hard rock band, right? What's that? There's like sticks and deep purple. Are they sort of similar? I don't know. They're the same era, right? Is yeah. that well, see, I, I don't should... know a lot of sticks. Um, okay, oh, I'm going to send you something. I'm seriously going to send you something. Um, here, Paradise Theater. Okay, there there it is online. How can I... Okay, all right. Are sticks still playing? Yes, they are. Oh, my God. Okay, I just... <laughs> this is so funny. I was going to ask you questions, but I love something about music, so this is what we're going to do. Um, I just saw them in concert. It was mind blowing. These guys sound like they did fifty years ago. <laughs> oh wow, fifty well, years ago. <laughs> give me a bit of a background uh, for me, but also many people that are tuning in, possibly for the first time. Isn't it? I'm turning the tables now. How did you get into this recording uh, and um, uh, uh, YouTube uh, video uh, interviewing thing that you've got going on? <laughs> Sorry, that was a terrible way to describe it. No, How did you get into fine. recording? Let's, I didn't hear the last part of that. I'm were sorry. Your, were your parents music uh, in the music industry at all or just no. music buffs? 
I love they music. Just, they just dig music. <laughs> they just enjoy okay. it. And, and so music was playing around in the house as you were growing up and... <laughs> Very right. much so. Okay. Oh, my God. And, A lot. And you play, the, you play the guitar? I do play the guitar. What else? Um, I'm also, I'm learning, I don't know a lot on the piano, but I can pull out some pretty groovy things, I think, uh, just by sound. I know how to play the violin. I'm teaching myself the drums right now, and I really want to play the bass, but um, I'm still learning that. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. I wish I had the patience to learn a musical instrument. Oh, you don't know how to play any musical instruments? <laughs> I don't know how to play any musical instruments. I remember playing the xylophone in music class. That's and fun. I remember playing the recorder, as every kid does. But oh, uh, I don't know. I struggled. I struggled with the guitar, Sandy, just like I struggled on roller skates and on a skateboard oh and on a push bike. Very clumsy. Very clumsy. That's why I just, you know, I'm, I, yeah. I, uh, but I, I, was, I was on the radio as a DJ, actually. Let's hear about your so, DJing so in terms of In terms of... Um, uh, well, and it's not necessarily spinning records on the deck, uh, but you know, sliding CDs in their slot and pressing the play button. <laughs> so, I can do that. Very, yeah, yeah. So, so very, very clumsy individual, but not when it came to, um, well, you know, or still not when it comes to sort of discussing music or playing music or, um, uh mixing things live to air so what i used to do i used to be on a radio station when i was at university uh which i guess is your college after high school uh okay college yeah. radio college radio yeah and so i was on i was on um while i was studying uh the university the college had a radio station a broadcasting from their campus and so i was on that uh I, I had a program, I had two programs actually, one with a couple of people that was like an afternoon slot where you did current affairs uh, stories, but also interviewed bands. Um, and then I got, I was so intoxicated with uh, the radio and, and just music and discussing, you know, more, more so than the current affairs story, but, you know, meeting, m meeting my idols, I guess. And um, uh, I remember interviewing Nine Inch Nails and a band called Filter in the day. So this is 1990s, early 1990s, shortly after the grunge um, period. Uh, beautiful uh, uh, American three-piece called Grantley Buffalo, who still remain one of my favourite artists of all time. Um, lots of, lots of lots of artists and um i ended up getting my own show which was a evening show and it was more reliant on sort of electronic industrial heavy type sounds oh, again like the nine inch nail stuff and then um i ended up moving to another radio station that was broadcasting for so that was buying for a license it was like a breakfast slot but Sandy, I then just got a little bit tired of my voice. <laughs> and, and so I just ended up starting to do, uh, play around live to air with uh, spoken word uh, poetry and, and, and spoken word music with instrumental soundscapes and just mixing them on live, um, mixing them live. Um, so less... Uh, talk back I guess and more just music and inst musical instrumentation uh which is is very funny because after I finished radio I stopped listening to the radio I don't know I just I, I and I still to this day I can't because because of all the chatter it drives me bonkers I just want to hear music <laughs> so um in a nutshell yeah so I was a DJ for for my unit my college years uh and I loved it I loved it I love meeting all my idols and you know, we had this, we, we would do, um, uh, we would sponsor some big festivals, the radio station that I was working with. So we would be able to, you know, go and um, promote the festivals and be backstage and, you know, have dinner with some of the bands and 
actually live. Oh no, I never got to mention live, but live is a very 70s influenced band as well. They're, they had a massive album called Throwing Copper, which I think you'd like if you like, you know, Led Zepp and, you know, a couple of the other 70s bands that you, uh, 70s sort of, sort of era, yeah. Oh, awesome. Oh, wait, what's the name? What's the name? What's the name of the band? <laughs> L-I-V-E, L-I-V-E, and the album's called Throwing Copper. It was very, very popular in the early 90s. It's a good one. Cool. Okay, I'm going to actually, I'm going to have to listen to that. <laughs> yeah. oh, that but also, also, you must hear this one, Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds, because you said you want to start uh, learning the piano. Now, yes. Nick is an old Aussie punk uh 1970s 1980s punk and he, he's like a legend now he's a poet laureate really he's just so versatile he writes he does soundtracks for a lot of your films you probably have seen um he did the soundtrack to blonde which is a new film on netflix it's about marilyn monroe um but this album is one of his probably his magnum opus and it he changed his tune because it was very very heavy um the cave and the bad seeds they were very very heavy bluesy um punkish but this one is all acoustic based it's it's centered around the piano and it's so confessional and just vulnerable and emotional and gut-wrenching because it details a disintegration of a relationship he had so it's it's also very confessional very autobiographical and they say he was in a relationship with someone called Polly Jean Harvey, who is known as PJ Harvey. Um, like, uh, just an incredible, incredible musician. Uh, beautiful, simple booklet with <laughs> heaps of lyrics. His lyrics are, 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 are majestic. Listen to me, Selinger. Oh, <laughs> I like that. But yeah, you know, um, I, how, was, how was meeting Danny? Oh, my. Uh, not Danny. Um, yeah, it was Danny. What's his name? Oh, it was Danny. Danny. Yes, was it was Danny. Danny? It's so funny you're interviewing me. Um, <laughs> um, that was really, really wild. And I've been watching him since I was this big. And <laughs> yeah, I was this big. Um, and it was uh, really wild to actually be able to speak with him. You know, I've been texting with him uh, for a couple of years now, but actually getting to talk, you know, that's, that's totally yeah. different. Yeah, yeah. How special. Yeah, it was. Oh, I must not. Okay, I'm I'm getting along with you so well here. I forgot to introduce you to my friend. I'm dying to meet your friend. Good, good. Okay, all right. Uh, <laughs> this is Anna Lynn. Oh my Anna God! Lynn. I'm here to put me on the floor. Yeah, I'm Anna. Lynn. Oh, oh, it sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Anna Lynn, I'm so sorry. We've we've kind of taken so long. Uh, <laughs> We got you distracted with music. 36 minutes. Yikes. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. You must be in agony. She <laughs> lying down on the, on the floor. I'm so sorry. I'm on so the sorry. carpet socks with my mouth open. You, you look amazing, though. If it's any consolation. <laughs> you, really, you really think so? Really? Oh, I'm telling you, I'm you. You look, you look beautiful. <laughs> he thinks so. Oh. If it was another person, although we are virtually speaking here, but if it was another person in the room, I'm sure she wouldn't neglect you. You really believe that? Do you really? I like to think so. I like <laughs> to hope so. Now I, I don't know, socks. You know, she's got the darn guitar with her sometimes. Ah. Uh -huh. Well, the guitar's not a human being. If it was a human being or another not human being. <laughs> well, yes, well, an in, in inanimate object like a guitar. Anyway, anyway, it's such a pleasure to meet you, Anna Lynn. <laughs> thank you for having me. Thank you. for Thank you for making me feel so much better, truly, genuinely. Oh, uh, thank you for making me smile and laugh. I, I, you know, it's something that we need to do on a daily basis. So thank you, honey. Uh, well, you know what? I, I would thank you for the same thing, but when you make her smile and laugh, I can't talk. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> I'm sure you can. But you are, you are without even opening your mouth. You know, look at those eyes. 
they're communicating a hell of a lot. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm a little bit curious. May I ask either of you a question? You can ask either one of us anything you want. All right. Uh, but my question is, my question pertains to the show that I, I was on a couple of years ago, which, um, you know, uh, uh, I don't know if I'm shocked anymore to, to discover that that a lot of kids, um, a lot of young adults, have been watching it. So that's why I asked your age because I'm thinking, you know, it's 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 a it's a little bit of a taboo show, um, and you know, some some people say that kids shouldn't be watching it. What what show are we watching here? <laughs> are we talking about Wentworth? <laughs> We are talking about Wentworth, uh, and I don't know if Annalyn, you're aware of it, or if if Sandy has just uh, introduced me from <laughs> from other ways, other means, and you've kind of gone, oh yeah, I, I let let's talk to socks. <laughs> well, you know, I, I did watch the show. Well, I, it's like, I mean, what? what I'm, it hasn't like it hasn't affected you, <laughs> I guess. You know, a lot of people kind of go. Whoa, this is this is heavy stuff. You know, I don't want it to taint you, I guess, Anna Lynn. I've already been tainted. <laughs> no, no, um, you know what? I don't don't tell anybody this, but I don't actually have a real brain or heart or anything. Nothing really, you know, gets in here. <laughs> okay, so it's the perfect show for you then. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Uh, okay okay yes okay I think when Wentworth first came out back in the day we were concerned for the youngies watching it and every now and then we'd get people saying you know they are uh and I didn't know how to deal with that but I guess maybe I have been living in a little bit of a bubble because <laughs> kids these days man they're probably doing a lot worse than what I was doing when I was a child but also watching stuff like Wentworth is like you know it, it's kind of it, it's not shocking I guess I mean Euphoria have you seen Euphoria? Euphoria? No I haven't. Oh okay <laughs> well, it's the same thing oh, it's okay. these days that you know it's it's well it's not the same thing but it's um yeah like pe people say it's it's um it's another controversial show, but it showcases kids in, in a way that's quite realist, realistic, even though a lot of people don't want to kind of uh, say that that's how kids behave. But I think they do, you know? Yeah. yeah. Wow. How did you, um, I, must, I must ask, uh, how did you get onto the show? What was that process of getting into it? Uh, well, it, uh, I had done something... I had auditioned actually for a for a, a trans character in something prior, um, and the casting director was casting Wentworth, mm. and so he recalled my tape and he asked me to put one down for this role, Maxine in, in Wentworth, uh, and I was living in uh, the states at the time, so I got two of my friends to. Um, make me look, uh, you know, feminine. So I, I, you know, one of them gave me a dark wig and put makeup on me, very, very subtle. And I put the tape down um, and they cast me. And I think the key for me was I never thought of Maxine as a, a trans woman even though she was I kind of channeled her soul her essence um because the soul doesn't have a gender you know oh wow it doesn't and Maxine just wanted to be loved and had a very traumatic life and was very felt very innocent and loyal to her her loves um and was resilient. And I just channeled those qualities that I know, you know, so well in my own personal life. Um, and I think they, uh, the producers kind of saw the tape and said, okay, Sox is doing a, 
a non-stereotypical version of a trans person and he's connecting to the emotions of the character and that's why they gave it to me oh yeah. what, what was that set like what were all the people like uh, amazing it, it was one of those dreams one of those dream jobs a, a real dream come true i grew up on the if we're talking about cover versions i grew up on the original series which was a show called oh yeah prisoner here in australia and i think it was cell block h maybe yep. in america or yeah that's what it was so this is in the 80s and i grew up on i grew up watching that um this is one of the most popular shows on australian television and again you know my parents were like you shouldn't be watching this <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's, you know, we don't want to see these kind of this representation in our living room. Uh, but, you know, like all of us, even a lot of a lot of the actors on the show would say we would watch it as kids and we would sneak, sneak, you know, behind the door and kind of peek into peek, peek on the TV. It was so popular. Oh, so to do so, so funny popular. because compared to compared to Wentworth, that is so lighthearted. <laughs> I know. I know. But back in the it's day, so of course. Yeah, was, at that time. <laughs> right. Which is always the case. I can imagine what things are going to be like in 20 years' time. On, oh, my on, God. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. God knows what you'll, you'll be doing with, you know, your show will be, <laughs> will be broadcasting from God knows where and God knows how, the guests you'll be having on and what you'll be doing. <laughs> and Aline, you'll be 20 years older. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, I'm going to be old. <laughs> You, no, you won't. You won't age. Um, you won't age. That's the special thing about you. It's a magical thing about you. But um, uh, we were all... The, the great thing about the job, Sandy, and I don't know if you know too much about um, television studios or filmmaking as you do about, you know, the art of the record, is that we were all housed in the one set. And this is a rare thing. So... Um, it was a, an abandoned studio, I think, in Melbourne that they uh, designed as a prison. But at the same time, the whole team, the editors, the um, the sound people, uh, the producers, the writers, they were all housed in the same building. And that's a very rare thing. Usually you're, you know, displaced, right? right? Uh, and so we all felt like such a family. And you know, you might think, "Oh my God, this is uh, uh, um, what's that? What's that term? Not claustrophobic, but like uh, not a Groundhog Day, but just like you're imploding or something." Uh, but but not at all. It just felt so familiar. Felt like a second home, and the people were just wondrous because we knew we were doing something special. We knew we were doing something special. We knew the people were responding to the characters. You know, yeah. It was so well written, though. Oh my gosh! Yeah, so about well written. Characters, uh, the development was just oh so good. Um, yeah, yeah. Was there anybody that you're particularly close with on set? Uh yeah, I was really close with um, uh, Danielle, who played B. Smith. I had a feeling um, you would say that. I'm not sure why. <laughs> well, I yeah, I mean, she's a really incredible, formidable presence. Um, but she puts everyone before her, you know, just like B. Smith did in a, in a, <laughs> in a sense. Uh, and again, it was, a, it was a real odd couple scenario, you know, B. Smith and Maxine who ended up being best mates. And I, I, I love again, that. that sounds weird on paper. And, you know, when I was living in America and I was binging the first season because I knew I was heading over to Australia to do it, I, I, I couldn't get my head around how that was going to, uh, uh, present itself but I was so excited and upon meeting her my expectations were surpassed just <gasps> just a delight you know and she's a real inspirational presence yeah oh, oh I love that oh I was really hoping you would say that I don't know why I just she seems so she seems so sweet <laughs> I've seen so many of her videos and interviews and different things like that she seems really neat yeah, she's full of heart and she cares so much about people. You should try and get her on here. You should try and... Oh, you think she would do it? <laughs> I, ho I know she's an incredibly busy woman and, oh. like, I can never track her down. But she, she's open to, of course, she should be open to it. Oh, yeah. I'll, I'll try it up. <laughs> oh, she seems so great. Um, 
Oh, I wrote something down before. Um, what was I gonna ask you? Um, okay, I don't remember what it was, but uh, here's another one. Uh, you have any uh, specific memories that uh, you remember? Wow, that was incoherent. Do, are there any specific memories uh, of the set that uh, you, uh, like anything you could share? Favorite memory, I'm there we go. Those I'm just gonna, I'm gonna drink from this massive bottle. Go for it, that's <laughs> a really with me. bottle. You know what, I'll do the same thing. And no, it's not vodka. <laughs> it's too early uh, here in Australia to start drinking. Uh, Evelyn, is she okay? You've just popped it down on the floor again. I hope she doesn't. <laughs> You're drinking vodka. Is that vodka? <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if your parents are that cool. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Amy doesn't watch this, or mum doesn't watch this, they'll be like, stop, stop encouraging her. Are you okay? Oh my god, I almost spit that all over the place. <laughs> why, did it, how, why did it take you so long to swallow? <laughs> you made me laugh. Ah, oh, you should have just spat it on Anna Lynn. Oh. <laughs> she's gonna get she's oh my gosh she's probably i hope she didn't hear that i hope she didn't hear that <laughs> i don't think she's conscious right now <laughs> no no oh she's God. fainted oh. i almost fainted uh, it's funny that your yes. expression went from uh making <laughs> jokes about vodka to are you okay <laughs> yeah see yes on a delay here <laughs> what would you have done all the way from australia I, if i were choking <laughs> uh Oh, God knows. Well, that, that would have made the news. It would have made the news. That wouldn't have been good. <laughs> um, I don't know. <laughs> if you if you survive the choke, oh, God, yeah, oh possibly, possibly become a TikTok kind of, uh, um, uh, a TikTok, um, oh, my God, a TikTok... Uh, <laughs> What am I saying, Sandy? Socks, like is everything a, all right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, it would be a, a TikTok challenge. People would sort of try and emulate okay, and you. have someone from another country but, or continent say. But if you did, if you did, if you did choke and kind of just ended up on the floor like um, Anna Lynn, God knows it would it would be horrendous, and uh, yeah, it would make the news. It would be horrendous. But you know, I think I think people would flock to you know to your youtube channel and then just watch everything and learn about you and you know whether you were unconscious or something you'd become pretty famous <laughs> <laughs> there's, a, there's a song in that I, i'm sure led zeppelin wrote something uh, along those lines i have a good idea here we'll write a song <laughs> okay i don't know how to play this um, what are we going to write? <laughs> you said there was a song in there somewhere, so naturally. Oh, there's, a, there's a song in uh, in um, wanting, <laughs> wanting to become famous or becoming famous without even Choking. wanting to become famous. Choking oh. and then becoming <laughs> a superstar. Gee, I think that's what it should be. So um, hmm, let's think here. Hmm, how can, how can I write this? I'm just going up the scale. This is really bad. All right, now let's think of some lyrics. Um, <laughs> right. Okay, all right. Um, uh, gee, what can, what, okay, what rhymes with the word ground? <laughs> Found. I found. Oh, okay. Found. Profound. That... Fa okay, found. I can work with found. Anna Lynn's mound. What's that? What does that mean? <laughs> well, Anna Lind, her mound, like she's on the carpet at the moment, but she could that could also be a symbol for her the mound of her mount where she sleeps. The mound, the mountain. Oh, okay. All right. I can see. <laughs> I don't actually know. Oh, you want to hear something I know how to play a little bit of? Pick me off, though. I don't know what I'm going to play. I can play a pencil. 
<laughs> Wait, you should. You should play the pencil. I'll play the pencil. <laughs> you got to do it louder than that, Socks. Ow. <laughs> I can't hear your clicking. Oh, can't you? No. What? Where's your microphone? Well, uh, I'm, I don't have an external one. It's just the, the one on the computer. Uh, maybe I'll have to hum. I can do yeah. that. All right, I can dig that. All right. Well, okay. I can do choke sounds. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, my God. I cannot believe the turn this has taken. <laughs> yeah. Oh, um, here, do you do you know this song? Um, I'm not yeah, very play a song for me. Okay, I don't actually know how to play this song. <laughs> oh, that's not close to right. Okay. Do you know it? Well, if you keep playing it, I might guess. Well, Sounds I mean, familiar. that's all I know. <laughs> it goes oh. really, but you know. Yeah, it sounds familiar. I'm sailing away, setting open cars for the Virgin Sea. Cause I've got to be free. Free to face the life <laughs> that's ahead. Did you hear that? No, what was it? How can you hear it? Is <laughs> it like thunder? Oh my gosh! Is it right? We're raining? about to get. We're about to get a, a lightning thunderstorm. Oh no! Well, is it? Is your? Do you have any dogs? Do you have any cats? Yeah, I got a. <laughs> I got a cat, but it was is just more sync, synchronicity with yeah, with when you started playing. I am sailing. And it was so That's beautiful. Funny. The he the, hev the heavens heard you, and they kind of either said, "We are in agreement," or "Shut the f up, Sandy." <laughs> <laughs> that was amazing. Anyway, it, it's it's on. It, it's coming. But no, is that the song you played instrumentally just prior? Sorry, uh, that's are the they the lyrics to this? You know, you said you know this song, and then you started singing it. Is it the same song? Wait, when did I say, do you know? Oh, when I was playing the, uh... Yeah. Yeah. Um, is it yeah, the same uh, yeah, one? Yeah, that's, that's the same song. Ah, uh, what is it? It's not Rod Stewart's Come Sail Away. On. Come Sail Away. <laughs> no, I don't know that song at all. Uh, but you should know Enya's Orinoco Flow, which is, the chorus is Sail Away, Sail Away, Sail Away. Can you sing it? No. <laughs> no, because you will lose all your viewers. Even if I tried, she sounds like an angel and would be regarded as adult contemporary. And it was 1987 when I think she released Orinoco Flow. She has gone on to be, and like, she's like the Mariah Carey of Ireland. Oh, wow. I, I know, I know who that is. <laughs> but it's classical. It's classical more so and spiritual i can dig that oh that's really that's cool enya orinoco flow that's what you need to here comes the rain i wish you could hear it can you show it to oh. me you can't see it through the window <laughs> see it just looks like sky yeah i don't see anything <laughs> yeah see that's why I would show you out my window, but it's it's very dark. You wouldn't be able to see anything. No, well, it's late there. I I, I can't yeah, use the chat. Why can't I use the chat? The chat? On like Zoom? Oh, there it is. Yeah. Orinoco Flow by Enya. Oh, from Socrates. Oh, nice. Okay, here I'm gonna I'm gonna copy that because I want to make sure want to make sure I listen to it. How do I copy? <laughs> we have copy. we have now we have now we have now started to chat. And <laughs> can you hear that? 
Yeah, I heard that. Really? I, like, I didn't realize that that was thunder. That's so funny. There we go. See, I should. I'm, I'm not going to talk for the remainder of the interview. Just uh, back, I'm, just yeah. gonna, I'm just going to type, and we'll hear the thunder in the background. And that actually can be. I think it might be inspiring your song. Oh, and here, you need here, to. I'm going to take a picture of this so I remember. Okay. All right. <laughs> Hang on, hang on. Of what? Of the chat. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> Fuzzy and Mighty Joe Moo. Okay, there are a couple of um, songs and albums. Well, one song by Enya. <laughs> she said, sail away. Not, again, it's not like, oh, I'm Voices of the Beehive. I, I think I love you. Uh, but the button was called right. by Nick Cave, Jeff Buckley's Grace, Grant Lee Buffalo. Okay, I cannot, I can't even wait. This is going to be so exciting. You're going to hear a lot from me. I'm going to tell you all about it. <laughs> oh, like Grant Lee Buffalo's music is just so beautiful, so beautiful. And their lyrics are sensational. There's a oh, song called Amer um, America Snoring, which is so current. And they wrote it in 1990s or so. Can you, you can't see any of that, can you? No, it looks nice out. <laughs> yeah, no, it's coming down really hard. Oh, really? It's raining. Uh, yeah, it's great. It's lovely. Um, I but America's snoring, snoring, it's um, one of the lyrics is something about tanks coming up on Sunset Boulevard. Such, such a beautiful beach. vocalist, Grant Lee Phillips. I got to interview them when I was on radio. Oh, uh, wow. But I love music. Yeah. What was that like? Uh, I was a little bit eager and a little, and when I get eager, when I was, I was a little bit eager and my voice went up. <laughs> a little bit like Annalyn's. Like Annalyn? Uh, I should get Annalyn back uh, do that. No, 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 no. She's, she's, she's sleeping, she's sleeping. Don't bother her. Okay, I won't bother her. <laughs> wow, did your, did your door just open all by itself? Yeah, see, that's the wind. Do you have a ghost? Possibly, but that's, see, it's really coming down now, and that's the wind. But also, hey, G, G, I think G's asleep. Is that no, your ghost? Oh. <laughs> Can you hear that? No, I'm not hearing anything. It's raining here too now, by the way. <laughs> that's so funny. Oh, wow, I see the wind. G is. Oh my god! Is it is it really um raining there? Yeah, it was snowing a little bit before, but now it's raining. Where are you? New York. Oh. Why is that uh, good? I just um yeah no I I didn't know I thought you were in this in the middle of America even though you probably told me you're in New York. Uh, no, my friend is there at the moment. So. Oh, where where oh. in New York? Passing through. <laughs> Oh. New York City. Oh, I'm on Long Island. Ah, uh, well, lo great. Long Island's always popping up. Have you ever been here? Uh, I was there. Hey, that's hail. Wow. <laughs> what? Uh, sorry, sorry. Uh, this this whole session has gone. <laughs> um, uh, I have. I was there. I was there, yes. When was I there? In 2000. I think it was January 2000. So I'm due for another visit. <laughs> I wasn't even born. <laughs> it makes me really sad. Yeah, well. Hey, when were you born? 2007. What day? Guess. <laughs> uh, you need to give me a hint. All right, I'll give you the month, okay? No. No? That's too much of a hint. Okay, all right. Um, what give me the season. The give me the season. Autumn. Autumn. So is that fall? <laughs> yes. Your your seasons are different to ours, though, aren't they? So oh, our right. autumn 
is March, April, May. But yours <laughs> so is. Funny. Yeah. That's yours. September and November. <laughs> so you're September, October, November. Yeah. Okay. So I'm thinking you're an October baby and you're a Libran. Okay, that is creepy because you're right. It's not creepy because Librans are earth signs and Taurians are earth signs. So there's a syncopation happening. Wait, what does that mean? Well, I, I get you. <laughs> We're on the same sign. We're on the <laughs> same, you know, um, earth, uh, water, air, and sea. No. <laughs> earth, wind, and sea. And fire. <laughs> and fire yeah see i'm the opposite of fire that's why i can't remember it yeah so i'm an earth kid and you're an earth kid that's why we're in sync so what are you working october 15 no keep guessing 11 no you're getting closer eight getting closer six good job <laughs> hang, hang there my dear Hang there, one, one tick. Hang there, one tick. I'll play the piano. Play the piano. Now, maybe you can play the piano while I give you a spoken <laughs> word. Um, uh, song. Oh, would you like me to? <laughs> yeah. Okay, I, need, I need a bit of background music. Okay, I can't promise you it's going to be great, but I can definitely try. <laughs> I, I am promising you that this isn't going to be great, but already the information is going to be superb. Okay, I can dig. All right. Sandy. You were born on the day of the good life. In order to taste fully the joys of life, one must has... <laughs> I screwed it up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm so confused what's happening. <laughs> okay. So I'm reading about your birthday. Oh, that's okay. Now I understand. <laughs> Wait, that's cool. Yeah. That's really cool. It's usually very accurate. October 6th, the day of the good life. What does that mean? I, well, you're born on the day of the good life. Like I'm, I'm born on the day of practical awakening. So you're born on the day of the good life. I mean, that's like, it's, it makes total sense. You emanate goodness and happiness. Aww. But here's your meditation. Here's your meditation. And again, dad, I'm sorry if you're watching, but I'm not, I'm not, I'm not doing anything bad to your daughter. Meditation. In order to taste fully the joys of life, one must have suffered as well. So there is suffering ahead, Sandy. Hopefully it's not the choking kind. But, you know, we all suffer. Uh, but I think it's a yin and yang thing. You, you are pretty optimistic, adventurous, and vivacious. And I think you're going to be able to deal with the suffering that comes your way. I hope so. Um, oh, how's your physical health? I don't know. I think it's good. <laughs> Great. Keep it up. <laughs> okay. Those born on the 6th day of October are ruled by the number 6 and by the planet Venus. We don't need to go into romance. We don't need to go into health. You're too young. <laughs> oh. October 6th, people like to live life to the fullest. For them, life is an adventure. And mundane dullness, their enemy. Oh, my God. I understand that more than anybody in the whole world. <laughs> yeah. 
Women born on October 6th will give all for love. They will not let marriage or any other social institution stand between them and their romantic ideals. Oh boy. <laughs> Most often highly prized as friends, not because of their supportive qualities or their loyalty, but simply because they are fun to be around. Most six, October 6th people, however, well, not however, I've, I've just jumped that paragraph. Uh, Ah, this is interesting. It sometimes seems as if those born on October 6th are acting out of some compulsion to negate the seriousness and deeper meaning of life. Now, less highly evolved October 6th people, this isn't you, can get so carried away with enjoyment and a kind of Pollyanna attitude that they, are risk, that they risk losing what they have in this world. I don't think that's you. Most people, are reasonably optimistic. Though uh, they have a cheerful outlook, there is an underlying hard side to their characters that allows them to weigh the consequences of what they do and the prospects for success. October 6 people like the efficiency of modern conveniences, but at the same time are traditionalists in their interests and tastes. Indeed, they know how to put together an elegant, uh, uh, like, um, conservative based on old formulas, old principles. Okay, I understand. Okay. Oh, gee. Uh, uh, anyway, they must, however, beware of growing too attached to comfort or luxury or choking whilst playing the keyboard. <laughs> what the hell? This is spooky. I am closing this book. Wow. Anyway, the day of the good life. Oh my God. That is, that was really funny. Oh, that was really quick. Louis, 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 Edward V. Fred Eklund. Hmm. My eyesight's getting pretty bad. Helen Wills Moody, Wimbledon champion. All right. Sorry, I've um, I've derailed this interview. <laughs> no, lots of information. Lots of information. This has been absolutely wild. <laughs> we can, you know, wrap some things up. <laughs> yeah, I I, I apologise. Uh, no, are you I, kidding? You know, so much fun. Well, you know, for, for, for us, <laughs> I don't know if anyone's going to, you know, uh, stay the duration. But um, I think there will be people that will because you found out as being, you know, a fan myself, all that fans really want to see is their idols in, you know, a, a living room setting. You know, they want to they want to see them as people as opposed to what they're, they're constantly doing for a living with acting. Uh, and but also, also, I think I think what you offer is something pretty unique and pretty um, curious and interesting. So you know give yourself a lot of credit there because i think people are tuning into you know to be entertained by you where, where do you... Nah. anyway uh sandy thank you my darling um thank you for making me smile and and to um and lynn i think she's in deep sleep like she <laughs> she heard she heard me <gasps> hey girl Oh my god, I can't believe she did that again. <laughs> yeah, no, we I'm sorry, stop blaming Sandy. We heard you snore. Uh-oh. I I I thought you were gonna tell him about that. Yeah, no. So you you cut us some slack, Annalyn. <laughs> uh, Sandy is absolutely <laughs> fantastic. Do not let this get out. So are you socks? <sighs> Yeah, look, I, I was so pleased to, to meet you, uh, Annalyn. I'm so happy adorable. I got to meet you. you. You are adorable. <laughs> okay, we're going to just stick with that. Yeah. <laughs> and, and Sandy, again, thank you so much for your time, honey. Good thank luck you. with everything. Till next time. Absolutely. And you'll be hearing from me very soon. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much. Hugs. Bye, girls. <laughs> Hugs. Bye. Bye. Yo.
on the clouds and the rain A place where your sadness drains Where the sun peers over Your sadness and your pain There is no gravity Yet within this cavity You make your own truth Your dreams will come true if your mind isn't glued to the fact that life is so blue Your dreams cannot stay if you don't repay yourself for making it